Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Onchalskas. Today is the 29th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's afternoon uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves guys. So feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. Yes, guys. So, yep. Uh, check us out here. Uh, I believe you can find something useful. So, um, also, quick update on the figure here. Uh, so, this is this was the figure from this morning. Uh, so, let's see what's happening here. Uh, how far or how much it has risen. Um, it has grown. So, okay. So, there we go. So, yes, it increased a little bit. So, yep, that's still okay. Not like it was before. Uh, but yeah, uh, continue being, staying safe, guys, and continue uh, taking your precaution precautions. Um, now then, jumping into the markets now, uh, this is what I talked about this morning. Basically, uh, what I was saying that if the price continues to balance above this 5,895 territory, then yes, then we could see this one pushing further north. Um, today, as you can see, the index is already pushing above the uh, that psychological 6,000 level. I talked about this one. And uh, now, of course, if it if it stays above that psych uh, psychological 6,000 territory, then yep, uh, we could see this one pushing further north. For now, we are still aiming for the upside. Um, we still have one more day left, full day to trade in April, so that's tomorrow. Um, so yep, let's see how this is all this is going to play out. Uh, but uh, for now, yes, uh, it is it is pushing higher. Um, so for now, we are more bullish than bearish on this one, or should I say slightly more bullish than bearish, because don't forget that this move higher is still seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling, because overall the market is not really, um, <clears throat> um, let's say, doing well. Um, yes, it is pushing higher right now. It is recovering. But uh, again, that's the whole point is recovering. Um, and it's correcting right now. So, um, so yeah, keep your eyes on this one. Uh, but we are, like I said, from the very short term perspective, we are leaning a little bit more to the upside. However, overall, uh, this could still be seen as part of a larger correction. Uh, jumping into NASDAQ 100. Now, the index yesterday closed in the, t in the negative territory here, as you can see. <coughs> excuse me, initially was trading above the uh, 8,880 zone. I talked about this one previously, uh, but yesterday drifted back down and uh, got closer to this short-term upside support line taken from the low the 23rd of March. So uh, looking at the cash index right now, uh, you can see that the cash index is getting pulled by the U European equities uh, to the upside. So the cash index is currently balancing at around 8,850 zone. So basically, uh, well above uh, yesterday's close, um, but still below this 8,880 zone. So we'll keep, we'll continue monitoring this area. We'll continue observing this, but uh, for now we're little. Uh, 
it will be quite interesting to see if we can get back above this 8880 zone so something to monitor guys something to consider uh, also another thing as long as this upside support line stays intact we will remain a little bit more bullish than bearish but if if this one gets broken then well I mean this is where we should uh, probably the bulls should get a little bit more cautious uh, Brent oil quick update on this one uh, this one's pushing higher wonderful so it's good news here for the bulls however uh, once again, it's coming close to this 21.64 zone, and the big question here is can it um, can it actually stay above it? But um, again, we are at the end of the month. Uh, we still have uh, <clears throat> tomorrow to trade through. Um, that's the low, the last day of, of April. It would be quite interesting to see if we could get a, maybe a bit of a, a bigger uh, move here uh, I, in well in either direction. For now, we're just neutral. We're just going to continue observing this price action and uh, we're not going to be doing anything here because like I said, we would like to see that uh, nice, good, strong move in either of direction because then we could at least position ourselves accordingly. Uh, for now, it's, uh, well, it's a little bit of a uh, it's a it's a bit on the neutral side, I would say. Uh, Bitcoin, so finally pushing higher and breaking that psychological 8,000 zone, and the most important, it's breaking this 200 EMA here on the daily chart. Now, look at uh, previously when I was talking about this, and you can see by the arrows that I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. Uh, the, uh, what I was saying that if we get a break above this barrier here, the 7,466 territory, then yes, uh, there could be a chance for this one to push further north. Uh, it is, it did exactly that. It continued pushing higher. But what I was saying that the next target for us is around the 8,187 territory, roughly around here, uh, marked by near the highs of the 9th and 10th of March. So this is where the current holdup is occurring. Um, the crypto like i said we'll continue monitoring this one it is pushing higher but the big question here is can it can this area of resistance uh actually hold the price down if it if it can then we may see a bit of a correction here to the downside if we get a nice daily close above it then well i mean we'll continue targeting uh, higher levels initially we will aim for this low here the low of the first of march near the 8400 zone um, and then we'll take it from there uh, like i said i do understand it's not we're not far from that but we would rather be safe than sorry and uh, for now, uh, yes, that's exactly what we're going to be targeting. We'll aim for the 8,400 zone if we see the um, the crypto staying above the 8,187 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. If it stays below it, then we might see maybe a bit of a correction here to the downside. Um, however, to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels, well, what we would prefer to see here is a drop back below the 7,466 zone, somewhere around here, and then we could consider a lower level. So keep your eyes on that one. NZD USD. So NZD is pushing nicely to the upside. This is a daily chart, by the way, and you can see that for uh, f for five days in a row, this this pair continues to drift higher. However, it, today it pushed higher, but even further north, but uh, got well didn't quite reach the the current highest point of April, which is around the 0 0.6130 territory. So um, the big question here is: Can this pair push further higher, and can it actually create a new high? Uh, at least for this month. Now, I do understand that we don't have much, many days left, uh, but it would still be quite interesting to see if it can actually push a little bit higher. However, with the, ups, uh, with the upside, there is a problem with the upside because of this downside uh, resistance line taken from the high of the 31st of December. So in a way, it could push higher, but if uh, the upside uh, gets limited near this downside line, if it struggles to overcome this uh, and to overcome the 100 EMA here on the, on the daily chart, then, well, I mean, we could see a bit of a decline here again. So... For now, from the very, very short-term perspective, yes, we are still leaning more towards the upside. However, um, we will remain cautious and careful here. And, uh, well, um, for now, like I said, we will uh, we'll keep an eye on this downside line. And, of course, first of all, we'll keep an eye on the current highest point of April near the 0 0.6130 territory. So 
uh, let's see if it, if the pair can actually create a new high for this month. So it only has either today and or tomorrow to do that. Um, this leads us into AUD and ZD. So I talked about this pair uh, recently and what I was saying guys that um, in a way uh, yesterday when we were pushing higher what I was saying that this barrier here the 1.0757 territory if this area holds um, which is the um, which is the low here of uh, the 12th of November 2019, then we could see a bit of a decline here, especially if the uh, if the rate travels back below the 1.0708 uh, territory. Today you can see that it did have a moment here, it did drop below it, but it quickly got back uh, to this area and now it's currently balancing around it. So basically the kind of the pair is oscillating around this level. So uh, we still stick to the same idea because we, if we get a daily close below this territory, below this uh, 1.0708 zone, then uh, yep, uh, maybe we could see a bit of a uh, a bit of deeper extensions here to the downside. So. Um, and it, in a way, it could come in line with the idea of, of NZD USD pushing higher here as well. So uh, that's why, like I said, guys, for now, keep your eyes on this level. If we stay below it, then, well, it increases the chances of a potential drift uh, lower here, which could still be seen as a temporary correction because overall we are still trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. Um, USDCHF, uh, here the situation is a little bit difficult, um, so uh, yesterday the pair had another attempt to overcome the 0 0.9797 territory, but as you can see it failed to do so and uh, quick closed back, uh, closed not only below this, this level but also below the 200 uh, EMA here on the daily chart, so in a way um, you can see that it's struggling to overcome all this territory, so, uh, but at the same time it's still balancing abo uh, above this little area here, uh, the around the 0 0.9713 uh, zone, which also coincides with the 100 EMA here on the um, 100 EMA on the daily chart. So again, in order to aim for lower levels, we need to, we would like to see a nice good strong move below this 0 0.9713 zone, and of course below this 100 uh, EMA level, um, and then, yep, we could consider uh, slightly lower levels, only up until the 0 0.9588 zone, because that's the the current lowest point of um, of April, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's correct. That's the lowest point of April, um, and uh, it could be a nice target to reach. However, we need to see that nice good uh, daily close below the 0 0.9713 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, quick mentioning of GBP uh, JPY. Now this one is flirting with this area. I talked about this pair yesterday, and what I was saying that in a way, if we get a nice uh, break here, a strong move below the 132.44 zone, this increases the chances of a potential for the decline. So as you can see, uh, we did get a drop below this, uh, but the bulls are really uh, desperately trying to push this one back above this territory. However, of course, uh, for now, the whole kind of uh, price structure is, is kind of leaning more towards the downside, um, but we would like to see that a daily candle closing below this area, below this 132.44 zone, and then we could maybe aim for uh, slightly lower levels right here. But again, for now, guys, uh, yes, we are leaning a little bit more to the downside. However, we, as I said, we need to see that nice, good, firm uh, daily candle close below this 132.44 level. In terms of the upside, we will aim for slightly higher levels if we get a push above this level, above the 133.68 territory. That would also place the rate above the 21 EMA here on the four hour chart, and maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. Uh, for now, uh, the upside seems to be slightly off the table. Let's see if it can push further south. GBP USD. So um, this one for now is uh, working according to plan uh, because uh, in the beginning of this week I told you to keep an eye on this one because uh, we may be forming somewhat of a p p possible head and shoulders pattern. So we did get a test of this barrier here, the 1.2523 zone, um, which kind of provided very good area, a very good resistance. Um, and, t and yesterday we saw the kind of the pair sliding back down. So today. Uh, the pair did have an attempt to push a little bit higher, however, 
um, it kind of failed to reach the highs of yesterday and, and reversed uh, back down. But that said, um, it still remains above the 21 EMA here on the um, on the daily charts. So that's why, uh, as I've mentioned previously, we would uh, we would like to see a drop below this territory first, below this 21 EMA here on the daily chart, and then consider maybe deeper extensions to the downside here. So uh, at least until the 1.2195 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting developments here. In case this suddenly reverses sharply to the upside and breaks above the 1.2523 zone, the downside scenario could be slightly off the table. Um, now uh, jumping into Euro Aussie, uh, I wanted to show you this very nice, interesting chart um, and to show you where the pair is currently trading at. So. A while ago, I talked about this one, and uh, uh, initially, uh, it was a while ago when I, when the uh, the pair was still kind of balancing above this 1.70 territory. And what I was saying that if it gets a drop below this, then yep, further declines are possible, at least towards maybe the uh, 200 EMA here on the on the daily chart, or even we could see a test of this high of the the high of uh, of. Uh, is this the fifth of uh, sorry third of uh, February uh, this year? And uh, yep, it may provide maybe some support. So it did get it did provide some support today. Uh, we saw a test of that area from which the pair rebounded. Now the big question here is: Can the 200 EMA continue providing support? Uh, because this is will be, this will be quite interesting to to see and. Uh, if we do get a nice uh, reversal here to the upside, uh, uh, or should I say, in the other the other way around, if we continue seeing the 200 EMA providing decent support, then we could see a nice reversal here to the upside. So there we go. This is much probably the formulation will be much better um, because as long as it remains above the 200 200 EMA here, uh, we will probably aim for maybe for the upside again. Because but the only thing is okay. This is where um, it's a little bit tricky here. So. Um, Overall, uh, yes, it is drifting a little bit lower. So in a way, um, uh, we are trading below this downside resistance line. So f to be on more on the safe side, we would, of course, we would like to see a, a break of this downside line, and then uh, we could consider higher levels. Uh, but we will uh, be very careful here. Like I said, if we we see the pair the pair struggling to uh, move below the 200 EMA here on the daily chart, then well, it, maybe there could be a chance for this one to drift higher. Uh, like I said, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could uh, wait for a break of this uh, this downside line. However, uh, don't get me wrong, because still we don't have a clear reversal signal, uh, we cannot really talk about the upside. So uh, although it might present itself with a nice opportunity here to maybe go long at some point. However, for now, uh, because we are at a very interesting spot here, uh, as, as you probably know, well, the market knows that as well. So uh, maybe there will be a lot of traders who will start entering here, but then the, the pair will continue drifting further south. Maybe it could even uh, travel all the way here towards this level, the lowest point of February. Uh, or which is the lowest point of February, which is here uh, near the uh, 1.6086 uh, zone and then kind of reverse to the upside. So again, we have seen scenarios like that uh, several times where maybe it's at a key important support zone. However, uh, a lot of traders start going in, uh, going in, uh, uh, buying, and then you, yep, you get wiped out and then uh, it, it drifts a little bit lower and then reverses back to the upside. So that's why way for that confirmation uh, confirmation now the the good confirmation of course would be a break of this downside line uh, it's a bit of a tentative one I do understand that but nevertheless we'll keep an eye on it um, if we get get a break of this downside line this one's taken from the high of the 20th of March and if we do get a nice break above it then well we could consider maybe higher levels for now we will continue observing this one very carefully. We'll see how it behaves near the 200-day EMA, and then we'll we'll take it from there. We'll definitely pick up. On, I'll definitely pick up on this one 
in my uh, other videos uh, this week so yep uh, we'll see how it's getting along and finally euro usd so uh, this one he, it managed to break the downside line once again um, it traveled higher but failed to move above its 21 day ema here um, and uh, well it, it kind of as you can see the bears kind of pushed it back down below this downside line and the the pair now is again stuck in this little kind of descending triangle um, of course as you know according to all the TA rules these tend to break to the downside however uh, we, in order to get comfortable with lower levels we would need to see a nice good daily close below the 1.0777 uh, zone and then we could aim for lower areas uh, for now as long as it stays in this little territory we will remain neutral because for us to get excited with higher levels as I've mentioned previously we would like to see not only a good break of this downside line but also a push above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart so uh, so yep uh, that for now at the moment the area is around 1.09 level so roughly around there so um, so yep keep your eyes on this one guys very interesting developments here and let's see how this is going to play out but um, yep don't rush into anything uh, wait for that confirmation break um, on any of the on any of the instruments and uh, then everything should be fine guys so I hope you found it useful and I really appreciate all your views and your likes guys and I really appreciate your time so thank you very much for that if you want to catch my video tomorrow uh, my traders espresso uh, as always uh, just a little bit after six o'clock GMT time so yep uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and then we'll take it from there. So, so thank you very much, guys, and bye-bye.